Uh, do you think this particular form of philanthropy, it, it, have you seen it uh, be compatible, compatible um, with, with other forms, maybe not as uh, you know, large coming from um, you know, large private enterprise? Is there a lot of partnership there? Do you even think of it as philanthropy? No. I, 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 don't, I don't think of it as a philanthropy, um, but I think that you know, a lot of philanthropists and a lot of people who come from that side who are driven by impact are more and more attracted to this form of achieving the social impact. I look at it, um, and we've discussed it a bit uh, you know, during <laughs> lunch, is that you can be a purist and you say, I want my dollar to alleviate you know, poverty directly. And you can say, look, um, I want 90 cents of impact per dollar of my investment. And I'm willing to give $10 to this course. Or you can say, let's find an opportunity where I will get good financial return and I will achieve 20, 30 cents per dollar of impact. But because I receive the return, I'm willing to put 10,000 of those dollars. You calculate your impact would be much higher. Because I think this notion of financial sustainability liberates huge amounts of capital, in addition to liberating also the entrepreneurial drive of finding the solutions where you're accountable for the products. If you give a product as a grant, say this is the same solar lamp, you don't care how good it is. If you sell it, even for a fraction of the cost that you will sell it in the West, you are accountable to your customers. They have to buy it. They have to like it. They, have to come, they can come back to you and say, this is really, it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, make it better, <laughs> make it cheaper, make it last longer. And what is important, you treat people as consumers. You treat ev investees as partners, not as donation takers. So it's much more empowering. But I think, I think also it might be helpful to look at it from the perspective of, of, of um, philanthropists that, that get into what we could now call the impact investment space. And I'll give you the example of a, of a family office in California that I used to work with quite a lot when I was at Aureus Capital, and they invested in a number of our funds. Um, 80 people full-time working on this family's wealth, a very significant family office. And the particular family member that did ultimately invest in a Latin America fund and an Africa fund um, had a very nuanced view of what she was doing and why she was doing it. So she had her philanthropy box, and she was very clear about what that might achieve to many of Julia's points. What was interesting about the way that she approached this um, impact investing box, and this is private equity fund going into small and medium-sized enterprises was there is an economic development story happening in Africa where we are, and Latin America, where we, where we are empowering small businesses with capital that they can't get from formal financial institutions. I am participating in both an economic development story in a wealth building story because these companies will hopefully grow and take on more workers, and I am also doing good <coughs> in that broader, amorphous sense. So she perceived it in its own right as something related to, but, but, but different to philanthropy. Mm -hmm. 